After watching the entirety of this video, I guarantee that you will have a way above average understanding of airplane propellers. Airplane propellers in its most basic form works the same way that an airplane wing does, by creating lift. But getting deeper into the subject from here, it gets complicated. With the wing rotating, there is a big speed difference between the propeller root and propeller tip, varying blade angle between root and tip, varying cord length, and varying blade thickness. Then there's torque bending, thrust bending, and blade twist, which all affects its aerodynamics. And this all makes propeller aerodynamics an exceptionally complex subject. That said, I will explain some of the most important propeller topics in a way that will be understandable to pretty much anyone. So let's start with the basics. A propeller is simply a device that converts the rotating motion of a piston, turboprop or electric engine into forward thrust. Without a propeller, no matter how much horsepower or kilowatts these engines produce, they would not be able to move the aircraft a single inch. Airplane propellers usually have anything between two and six blades, but propellers with more than six blades has been manufactured, and even single-bladed propellers have been made, but you're unlikely to encounter these very often. A propeller consists of a hub, the propeller root, propeller tip, leading edge, and trailing edge. The angle of the propeller blade is its pitch, the width of the blade is called the cord, and camber is the shape over the top and below the camber line and determines the blade's thickness. There are three main types of airplane propellers. Fixed pitch, ground adjustable, for which the pitch can be adjusted on the ground, but remains fixed in flight, and variable pitch propellers, which can adjust pitch in flight. Propellers come in a virtually unlimited amount of shapes and sizes and almost no two different propeller designs look exactly alike. As I said before, a propeller acts like an airplane wing and by looking at the blade from the side, the resemblance can be clearly seen. When a wing moves through air, the air going over the top of the wing has a longer route than the air going below. Since these different distances are covered in the same amount of time, it accelerates the air going over the top, which creates a lower pressure above than below. This difference in pressure displaces the air downwards, or in the case of a propeller, backwards, and creates thrust. The faster a propeller spins, the more air is displaced per unit of time, and the more thrust is created. Similarly, the longer the blades and the wider the cord, the more air can be displaced and the more thrust is created. However, a propeller needs to be paired well with an engine, primarily to how much of the engine's power the propeller can absorb. The higher the engine horsepower, the more power the propeller should be able to absorb, which can be done with having longer blades, wider cords, more blades, or any combination of these. So even though virtually no two different airplane propeller designs look identical, they do all look very similar. But why is this? Why doesn't one, for example, see a lot of short, stubby airplane propellers, or propellers with extremely long blades, or dozens of blades, or other weird-looking propeller designs? The number of blades, blade length, blade cord, pitch and shape in general are trade-offs between thrust, aerodynamic efficiency and structural integrity. Structural integrity is very important as there are a lot of forces acting on a propeller. As the engine spins the propeller, it puts a centrifugal force or an outward pointing force on the propeller blades. Additionally, as a spinning propeller creates thrust backwards, the blades will want to flex forwards. Some propellers made from less flexible materials won't actually bend as much as some composite propellers, for example. But even so, these forces are present regardless of how much the blades actually bend, and the propeller needs to be strong enough to handle these forces continuously. These structural strength requirements put a limit on viable designs, and the most aerodynamic efficient propellers in theory are unlikely to be possible in reality due to the limitations of material strength as well as other physical limitations. 
The goal of propellers are always to be able to absorb as much of an engine's power as possible, or else it would waste some of the hard work the engine is doing. The more power it can absorb, the more thrust it can create. But it also needs to be as light as structurally possible and have the least amount of drag possible. With higher horsepower engines, one way to absorb more of the engine's power and create more thrust is to make the blades longer. Longer blades result in the spinning propeller having a larger area and can move more air. The bigger the mass of the air that is moved, the more thrust is created. So the longer the propeller blades, the more thrust is possible. However, the length of propeller blades are limited due to two factors. The first reason is the obvious one, and blade length is limited due to the available area around an engine. Many airplane engines are usually mounted fairly low, and there's a limit to how long a blade can be before it becomes at risk of hitting the ground, which would not only likely destroy the blades, but also damage the engine, especially in the case of a piston engine. For airplanes with top-mounted or rear-mounted engines, there might be even less space available. But there is also an aerodynamic reason for propeller blade length limits. For any given propeller RPM, the longer the blade, the faster the propeller tip travels. As the propeller tip speed approaches the speed of sound or Mach 1, it starts running into compressibility issues. The airflow boundary layer over the tip starts separating when approaching Mach 1, which creates a lot of noise and the propeller starts losing efficiency. And with reduced efficiency, there is no good reason to have the propeller tips travel too close to Mach 1. And this imposes a limit on how long a propeller blade can be for any given propeller RPM. Now, some might say, but how come then a helicopter rotor blade can be so long, but not an airplane propeller? A helicopter rotor spins much slower than an airplane propeller, and thus it can be much longer before propeller tip speeds becomes an issue. It also doesn't have the physical space limitations an airplane propeller has due to its orientation. However, helicopter blades isn't longer because it can spin slower. It can spin slower because longer blades are much more efficient. Thus, propeller blades will in 99% of cases be as long as it can possibly be without running into physical space limitations or the tips running into compressibility issues too close to Mach 1. But since the propeller's speed limit is inversely proportional to blade length, wouldn't a propeller then be more efficient if the blades are much shorter, allowing it to spin much faster without the tips going supersonic? Well, no. Propeller diameter is a major contributor to the amount of air it can displace. A propeller with a smaller diameter needs to spin much faster to displace similar amounts of air as slower spinning, larger diameter propellers. Since there are clearly a limit on propeller blade length and propeller speed, only two ways remain to further increase propeller thrust, which is blade cord and the number of blades. There's a third way, which is propeller pitch, but we'll leave that for last as it gets complicated. So let's look at blade cord and the number of blades. Propeller blades are usually more efficient the longer the blade is and the thinner the cord is, for the same reason why glider wings are very long and thin. This is why you don't see airplane propeller blades looking like this. But for the same reason why all airplanes doesn't have glider-like wings, other than for being very impractical for ground handling and storage, narrow cords easily run into structural strength limitations. Only with the growing popularity of composite blades have propeller blade cords become much narrower in the last decade or so. But with propeller blade length limits, propeller speed limits, and now propeller cord limits, the only remaining way to increase propeller power absorption or thrust is to add more blades. Some will want to jump in here and say that the more blades a propeller has, the more each blade spins through the preceding blade's wake turbulence, which lowers efficiency and thrust. But this effect is often exaggerated and isn't nearly as big of an issue. As propellers spin, they create thrust by displacing air. Displacing air means it moves the air. So by the time the next blade cuts the air, it is 
new air that it spins through as the previous blade's dirty air has been displaced backwards. This can be visually seen with propeller blade tip vortices, but that said, more blades adds more drag and more weight. But that is a necessary evil if more power are produced to be turned into thrust. Looking at a propeller blade closely, one can see the blades are twisted along its span, and the amount of twist changes from a high angle at the root to a shallower angle towards the tip. Because the tip of the propeller spins much faster than the root, with an airplane in flight, the tip hits the oncoming air at a higher angle of attack than the root. This is because the tip's higher vertical speed compared to the forward speed creates a higher resultant angle the blade tip hits the air at and a lower angle at the root. If the blades did not have any twist, not only would the thrust levels vary wildly across the length of the blade, but the propeller tip would constantly be in stalled condition due to excessive angle of attack, while the root would possibly have a negative angle of attack, effectively creating rearwards thrust. Uniform thrust and angle of attack across the blade span are achieved by twisting the blade by exactly the right amount across its span. We briefly touched on blade pitch, and pitch is another way to change thrust levels of a propeller. And unlike blade length, blade cord, and the number of blades, blade pitch can be changed on many propellers, and on some, even during flight. Blade pitch is simply the angle the blade hits the air with. A narrow angle is referred to as a fine pitch, and a steep angle is called a coarse pitch. A fine pitch propeller blade has less drag as the propeller blade spins around, requiring less engine power to spin the propeller. But a fine pitch propeller has more drag from the front as the aircraft moves forward through the air. Inversely, a coarse pitch propeller blade makes more drag to spin the propeller, requiring more engine power, but has less drag as the aircraft moves forward through the air. One could say a coarser pitch creates more thrust, but it's not that simple as the relationship between pitch and thrust isn't linear. To simplify understanding, think of a flat blade at 0 degrees and at 90 degrees pitch. At neither of those two angles are any forward thrust possible. From 0 degrees, making the pitch coarser at first increases thrust as well as drag, but as it gets coarser, Thrust starts lowering rapidly while drag increases heavily. And just like an airplane's wing, this continues to the point when the blade actually stalls when exceeding the critical angle of attack. A stalled wing creates a lot of drag but very little lift, or in this case, thrust. So there's a limit on how much pitch can be increased before the blades start stalling. But up to now, we've only considered a spinning propeller that is stationary. When a propeller moves through the air, on a flying airplane for example, the angle the blade stalls at gets higher the faster the airplane is moving. When stationary, the spinning propeller blade hits the air roughly perpendicular. But as the airplane speeds up, the angle the propeller hits the air at changes. The propeller still tries to hit the air perpendicular to the blade, but as the moving blade hits the air mass at increased forward speed, the relative angle the blade hits the air at decreases, effectively lowering the blade's angle of attack. The faster an airplane moves through the air, the lower the propeller blade's angle of attack. This effect has several consequences. Reducing angle of attack reduces thrust. For this reason, an airplane with a fixed pitch propeller, the faster the airplane is moving, the less thrust is created compared to a stationary propeller at the same power. Let's use a simple analogy to make it super easy to understand. Think of a moving walkway like found at many large airports. If a person walks on the walkway but in the wrong direction, your resultant forward speed will be much less than if you were to walk next to the walkway. And the faster the walkway moves, the slower your walking speed will be. It's the same with airplanes and propellers. The faster the airplane moves through the air, the less resultant forward thrust can be created. 
And this is where variable pitch propellers come to the rescue. As the increasing airspeed lowers the blade's angle of attack by setting the blade pitch coarser, it in turn increases the blade's angle of attack and the blades are able to provide additional thrust. And this generally results in faster cruise speeds. But why then should we not just set all propellers coarser, as it would allow the airplane to fly faster and be more economical? While a very coarse pitch propeller will result in more thrust in flight, it will be in partially stalled condition when the airplane is stationary, resulting in less acceleration from a standstill for takeoff. Thrust would be lower and compromise the all important takeoff performance. But that isn't the only problem. As the pitch gets coarser, a larger propeller blade surface are spent through the air, which increases drag or resistance to spin the propeller. This means the engine has to work much harder to spin the propeller. It's not a case of cheering the engine on saying, come on engine, you can do it, but more a case of the engine being unable to achieve optimal RPM for takeoff, further reducing takeoff performance. In general, we want the engine to spin close to maximum RPM, making the most power for takeoff. Setting the pitch to course prevents the engine to reach maximum RPM due to the excessive drag of the very coarse propeller. For this reason, the pitch set on a fixed pitch propeller are usually a compromise between maximum takeoff performance and maximum cruise performance, and the more one of the two is prioritized, the more the other suffers. But there's another reason why coarser propellers allow the plane to fly faster than a finely pitched propeller unrelated to thrust. Since getting optimum takeoff performance means letting the propeller spin as fast as possible, means the engine will be relatively close to maximum RPM at the commence of the takeoff run. Unfortunately, this means as the aircraft picks up speed after takeoff, the faster airflow over the propeller makes it spin faster. To prevent having to throttle back the engine to prevent it from exceeding maximum engine RPM, the propeller blades can be set coarser, increasing blade spin drag, slowing down the engine while allowing maximum engine power and propeller thrust. There is much more to know about airplane propellers. For example, propeller blade shape, how two and three bladed propellers compare in cruise and climb performance, P factor, spiraling slipstream, precession and modern propeller designs like toroidal propellers. But this should give anyone a solid foundation on the workings and limitations of airplane propellers. So let's call it part one and if there's interest I'll create a part two video covering some more advanced propeller topics.